What do we do in the balance view training? Well, having been involved in many practices prior to coming to this training, so I'm 50 years old this, this year, and that's becoming less threatening and disastrous <laughs> because of this training. Um, I met the training when I was 38, and I started seeking when I was 21. So 21 to 38, 17 years, not, not a great deal of time. But basically, in, in that search, um, I was looking for just really to feel comfortable in my own skin, ultimately. When I started seeking, I thought, okay, I want enlightenment, I want a big angel, angel singing and golden light coming down, everything's going to be really wonderful. But as I got older and more realistic, I just wanted to feel comfortable in my own skin. Which might not sound like um, much of an ambition, but for me, that was quite something. Because I wasn't able to find um, really any lasting well-being. I was very much at the mercy of depression, anxiety, panic attacks, getting old, um, all of the things that probably have played on you um, to a greater or lesser degree, my physical appearance, intimate partners, money, success, um, recognition from my peers, all of the things that I thought would make me happy. Um, it was very clear that regardless of whether I had these things in place or not, there was still a sense that, you know, really I hadn't arrived. I wasn't, I didn't have a sense of well-being. There was always something missing. Um, and my spiritual practices before I came to this training were basically the same. I wanted more positive and less negative. That was, that's the game of life, really. Um, and as we get older, we see that that isn't possible. You can't only have positive. You can't modify and get rid of the negative. It, they will always come back. Now, in the Balance View training, we call thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places and things, anything we can experience, we call that data. It's very simple and it also makes the talks a lot shorter because if I had to say people, places, things, thoughts, emotions, sensations, every time, it would be really tedious and repetitive. So data is just a term that we collectively use just to describe anything we can experience as a human being. Now one of the powerful aspects of that, of course, is its simplicity, but also it does away with probably the, the, the either subtle or overt league table we have of thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places and things. So you probably have love and, if, if you're like me, love and intimate relating would be more important than brushing my teeth, which is important, kids. You need to brush your teeth. But it's not as important as love and finding the perfect intimate partner. So you see, we, we become very skillful in separating our experience and then putting it into categories. What we really like and what we really don't like. And then we try and cultivate what we like and we try and modify and get rid of what we don't like. But the problem is that approach doesn't work. So that, you know, that's a big problem. Um, but also, what you like isn't going to be the same as what other people like. And the problem with this approach to life, individually and collectively, is that we're always going to meet people who have different opinions, different belief systems, different likes and different dislikes. Now, the, the solution in inverted commas, which isn't a solution at all to finding harmony on Earth, is to try and make everyone like the same things, basically. Now personally, even though in my imagination if everyone liked what I liked and disliked what I disliked, the world might be a better place. It would be really boring, for first and foremost. But more importantly, it's very, it's very um, vital that and probably you've all arrived at this conclusion anyway, um, that the, the conventional <laughs> approach to fi trying to find well-being, um, it, you know, there must be something else. There must be more to life than trying to cultivate positive and modify and get rid of the negative. So when I came to the Balanced View training, um, I was introduced to a very, very simple practice and a simple support system that I can test immediately in my experience. 
Um, and, and, and again, this is very, very important. What we're sharing here isn't about you trying to figure out what's being said and then try and um, fit it into what you already know. Um, what's being offered here is a simple support system and a simple set of instructions that you can immediately test in your experience in the midst of your normal everyday life. And for me, this was um, very, very different to any other practices I'd been involved in because there was a, a, a definite separation between my practice and my so-called normal life. And it, for me, it wasn't possible to integrate the two fully. Now, I'm not saying that I didn't get a great benefit from some of the practices I was involved in, more relaxation, um, you know, maybe more energy. But it was very clear that when I was back in my normal job, I was very often swept away with thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places and things, data. So the only practice we do here is to recognize our fundamental nature for short moments whenever we remember. And in the Balance View training, we call our fundamental nature open intelligence. Now, it's very important that you have a direct experience of open intelligence right now, not, not, you know, not as an idea, because if I just say to you, relax is your fundamental nature, you might be able to do that, but it's quite vague. And if we asked everyone, what is your fundamental nature? We'd have 40 different answers or 40, you know, very, very various answers. So it's important that you're introduced to the experience of what we call open intelligence. And the way we do that right now is if you just stop thinking, stop describing. So do that. I mean, you might immediately have a thought come back or a description come back or a sensation. So just stop describing. And what do you, what do you notice in your experience when you do that? There's an openness and alertness. What's looking through your eyes? What's listening to me speak? It's very subtle, or at least it was for me. But it's quite something, you know. There is something in my experience that I can't really describe, but I can experience. Stop thinking again. Identify open intelligence. And then just relax. Now, of course, everything immediately comes back. And if you're anything like me, it's like a dump truck of horse shit that just gets emptied <laughs> back into your head. And you're, you know, you're back with all your thoughts, emotions and sensations. So stop, just stop, relax, acknowledge open intelligence. Now, there are two, two aspects of that instruction that are really amazing. Number one is you already have what we call open intelligence. You're not creating it by coming here. It's present, you already have it. And what you'll start to see is that whether you're thinking or not, that open presence is there. Whether, you're, whether you have positive thoughts, positive emotions, positive data or negative data, open intelligence is already present. And the simplicity of that is so beautiful because what it means is that whatever you're experiencing throughout the day provides you with the choice to practice. Recognize open intelligence for a brief moment or not. It's wonderful. And the lightning bolt recognition for me in that instruction too was it doesn't matter what my experience is. It doesn't matter what my life looks like. Everything about my life provides me with that choice. So bingo, I said that the other day. I won't explain it because I think everyone knows what bingo is. But basically, I found what I was looking for, a practice that, that didn't require me to change myself in order to be able to recognize the nature of reality. It didn't require me to purify myself in any way whatsoever. And this makes perfect sense too. You know, I'm sure you've all been to teachers and teachings that say everything is a unified expanse. Everything is indivisible. It's all one. Okay, but you need to work on the ego. You need to polish it up or empty it. But if everything is all one, then, the, you know, the ego, negative sensations, anger, hatred, violence, all of these things, they must be evidence of the unity of everything. It can't be any other way. It's, it logically doesn't stand up. If everything is all one, then everything must be evidence of that. Now, this is what the Balanced View Training allows you to recognize in your own experience with your own 
I'll just say it one more time, thoughts, emotions, sensations. And this is what becomes so rich and wonderful. It's your life that becomes the practice ground. It's your life that becomes the provider of all the training material you need, just as it is for you to recognize this fundamental basis. Now, especially if you're new, it might seem like a nothing instruction. You, you know, you identify open intelligence when you stop thinking, oh, so what, you know? But I guarantee you that if you just practice this simple instruction whenever you remember, which probably will only be a few times a day in the beginning, what you'll start to notice is a very, very powerful opening up to connection, relaxation and empowerment, power, that has just simply gone unnoticed because of our obsession with our thoughts, emotions, sensations and other experiences, our data. So it's very, very simple. We've been used, so used to focusing on the descriptions. So in my case, I'm Adrian, I'm fat, I need to lose weight. If I lose weight, I'll get a girlfriend, I'll be happy then. Okay, so tomorrow morning I'll get up and I'll go for a run and I'll do this for the next month. Then in two months I'll be thin and I'll be able to get a girlfriend, then I'll be happy, then I won't be depressed. Then people will like me more because I'll have a girlfriend and I'll appear more successful. I mean, I don't know if that sounds familiar to any of you, but this is something that would basically I would reference all day long. So if I met somebody that I liked, oh my God, I don't look too, you know, especially here in Goa, why am I wearing these shorts? They're too tight. I should have worn baggier shorts because I look thinner then. Then she'll like me. Then maybe we can go on a date. Then she'll be my girlfriend. Then I'll be happy. You know, it's insanity really. Because all I could see was this tiny selection and everything referenced back to it. Now with this instruction of short moments, Wherever I am in that thought train, if I meet somebody, the go-to is this presence and openness. And from that, from that openness, the way I relate, the way I speak, has radically changed. And the reason for that is because the recognition of open intelligence allows you to identify something in your experience that provides constant well-being. Now that might be quite a leap for you if you're, if you're new. So the invitation is to not believe a single thing I'm saying, but be open to test out what is being said here and suggested. So that simple instruction of recognizing open intelligence for short moments, so you don't hold it in place, you just recognize its, its, um, its presence, then the thoughts come back and then just recognize it again whenever you remember. Short moments of open intelligence repeated many times become continuous, but that isn't the only support that's offered here. So you heard the term the four mainstays, which means the four aspects of the support of balanced view. And the only purpose of these supports is for you as individuals to recognize your innate perfection, power and potency, open intelligence. So the second mainstay is the trainer. We have many trainers all over the world which you can have access to face to face. We have trainings all over the world. Um, we have centers in many parts of Europe, America. And then we have an amazing website with lots of trainings and meetings that you can join via video conference where you have um, the opportunity to touch in with a trainer and just ask um, about your own experience of this practice and we will give you support based on our own experience. And then the third aspect of the, um, the third mainstay, the third support would be the training. So we have thousands of hours of, of talks and videos of participants sharing their experience of um, the benefits they see in relying on this support system. Uh, it's all free, free books, listening to, reading books, watching the media elicits the experience of open intelligence, again, in your everyday life, wherever you are. Um, and the final uh, aspect of the support system is the community of people all over the world who are practicing, relying on this, this support, the Four Mainstays. Um, and I can't tell you how, how radical the change was in my experience of life through simply relying on the Four Mainstays. You know, it's so simple. We learn anything in life by listening to other people talk about things, teachers, 
reading books, watching videos, and hanging out with other people. So, you know, maybe you're, some of you are musicians. I, I was a professional musician for many years. Now, my main instrument was bass and guitar. And when I was starting to play bass, if I'd have gone off into a cave with my little bass guitar book, practicing scales, then I'd have probably been quite good. But nowhere near as good as if I had a great teacher who was teaching me all the time and I was hanging out with other bass players all of the time, sharing ideas, sharing experiences, practicing together. And you, this is probably your experience too of any practice you do. When you have support, it's easy. Now basically what we've done as human beings is we've learned who we are not by reading, writing and listening to other people. Now just to return to the example of uh, an intimate relationship, if, again, I can only really share my own experience, but I really believe that there was somebody on the planet who, when I met them, all my problems would be resolved and we'd live happily ever after. Now, do you think that's an original idea that I had on my own, or do you think it's due to relentless programming? Now, just think about your own ideas on that. Is it your idea, or is it based on a lifetime of programming? to the point where you really believe this is the case. Now, some of you, again, I can only share my own experience, but you probably had more than one partner, maybe, you know, more than five or whatever. Isn't it pretty much the same thing every single time you meet somebody new? He or she is the one. This time it's so different. This time it's the most special thing in the world. Him and her, I get, you know, us, me and, me and her, me and him, 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 her, her, doesn't matter. This time, this is it, this is the one. How many times are you going to repeat that before you actually start to see that, well, maybe, maybe I've been a little bit brainwashed here. Now, the extent of the brainwashing in all aspects of life, but in particular with intimate relations, is it's quite astounding. When I was a little boy, and I've shared this before, my favourite bedtime story was Hans Christian Andersen and the tinderbox. And it was about a brave, strong soldier, me, little Adrian. I remember he had a nice red tunic on and a hat and everything. It was like, oh, the soldier. He chops the head off a witch, takes her tinderbox, which is quite unreasonable, really. Um, <laughs> he steals it, basically, and kills her. You know, so I'm being read this story when I'm two, you know, before I could pro properly speak. And the basic gist of the story is he finds a princess who everyone tries to stop him getting, but through this magic tinderbox he's able to have the princess and they live happily ever after. Now I was probably read that story maybe 300 times one year before I could speak, and probably for about three years, so that's a thousand times of basically <laughs> saying you are a big, strong soldier. It's perfectly fine to chop people's heads off and take their property. <laughs> but more importantly, you, you need to find a princess. And when you find the princess, you will solve the entire problem of, of the world. And you will live happily ever after. Now that's before I could even speak. And then just look at any film you watch. I saw, I, I shared this the other day too. I like science fiction movies, so there's a, quite an entertaining movie called, um, God damn it, I've got goldfish memory, Arrival, about uh, aliens coming and communicating with us, and it was, a, it was a, you know, really well made film, but at the end, um, some of you probably seen it, there was a, maybe 15 minutes of the hero and the heroine falling in love and deciding to have a baby. And it was all tied in with the aliens saving humanity. You know, this isn't, you know, it's, it's when, once you start to see it, it's everywhere. You need to have a partner, you need to have a baby, you will be happy. So it's not surprising that we, we really believe these things. And there are many, many other aspects to this conventional conditioning. And what this training allows you to do is 
recognize something that is completely free, completely open. It doesn't require that you change anything about yourself, so we're not saying you need to change your opinions and belief systems. But what you'll start to recognize is that that quality about yourself, that innate capacity to know, it doesn't require any thought, it doesn't require any justification, you don't need to discuss it, you know, you don't need to prove it to anyone else, it's so obvious, it's beautiful, and that's the only thing in your experience you could say that is original, everything else has been learned from someone else. Now that doesn't mean that you, you know, you do away with conventional knowledge, we're human beings, we're living in this fantastic world, we need to communicate, we need to get things done. But, the, the power of this training and the support is that we start to recognize what we call the crucial juncture, which simply means the inseparability of our data and open intelligence. So data and open intelligence are inseparable like the sky and the color blue. Data and open intelligence are inseparable like reflections in a mirror. And practically speaking, what this means on a human level is that we are identifying something in our experience that is the same for every other human being. Our thoughts, emotions and sensations, our hopes and fears are different. So another amazing recognition that you'll start to have is that as you stop trying to change yourself in terms of your thoughts and emotions, so in my case with depression, if, if, if I, as an individual, am trying to eradicate depression from my life in order to feel safe and happy, that mechanism on, a, on an individual level is no different to a country trying to eradicate another country or the behavior of another country in order to feel safe. It's the same. And once you start to recognize that things like depression, anxiety, physical pain, physical sickness are in fact inseparable from the ground of your experience. They are open intelligence. You don't need to do anything with them. There really is an explosion of love, openness, understanding, firstly for yourself, but then for everyone else. At the great misunderstanding that we have as human beings that we do need to do something about our thoughts, emotions, and sensations. But essentially, we are working on emptiness. We are working on nothing when we try to work on our thoughts and emotions especially. They're pure, they're empty of anything other than open intelligence. Now, an experiment I like to do, just a fun thing, involves fruit. <coughs> so if this side of, this side of the space, think, just think of an orange, and this side of a space, think of a lime, vivid green lime, vivid orange orange, and just hold that in your mind. Now some of you over here might be having oranges and limes like changing and you as well. But how long is it before you something else intrudes on your on your lime or your orange? You know, there'll be a sensation, a sound. You know, maybe some of you are thinking of a lemon. But you can't just have that in your mind. You can't just hold it in your mind. And more importantly, why can't you take that lime or orange out of your mind and make delicious juice out of it? It's not real, is it? It's an imaginary orange. But why do you think your depression is real? You know, if, if it was real, you could take it out and put it in a jar and say, that's my depression. It's, it's not real. It's inseparable from open intelligence. And the reason it's so frustrating to, to work on these things is because they have no independent nature. They are open intelligence. And again, this is something that will become your experience, not an idea, but an actual experience, that you do not need to do anything with your experience. You can just allow it to flow on by, because that's what it does anyway, like a line drawn in water. This is the nature of what it means to be a human being. We are aware, pure, basic space, open intelligence, in which everything appears in a beautiful, spontaneous flow. Even this fleshy lump appears in open intelligence. It doesn't generate open intelligence, it's the other way around. 
Now that might seem a little weird and maybe a little unsettling, but what I'm describing here is the natural state, what it means to be a human being. It's relaxed, it's empowering, it's full of love, full of connection, full of beauty, full of a desire just to be of benefit. And this is what Candice was referring to in the training. We are inherently wired to be of profound benefit. We are basically superheroes. And you heard Candice at the end saying, you know, we're awesome, we are exalted. And this is what you start to recognize in your experience, that we're not these limited, degraded, miserable creatures. Again, I'm just sharing my, my own experience. Being so caught up in what I think I, I need to happen in my life in order to be happy and not being able to, to, to manufacture that, you, you're just blind to the perfection and power that's already present. And this is what the training unlocks. Again, as a direct experience, not as an idea. So, you know, from the heart, I, I have changed from being very, very depressed, miserable, selfish, to just feeling mighty fine all of the time. And basically a very, very helpful, considerate and powerful human being. So I would from the heart in, invite you just to, you know, if you're here for the next weeks, just come to the open meetings. That instruction that we, we gave in the beginning of stopping thinking, test it out. You know, India is a great place for being poked with a stick, you know, things that wind you up. Test out short moments when somebody makes you angry, you know, when you're food that you ordered takes three hours to arrive at your table. That's a perfect opportunity to practice these short moments. I mean, it doesn't mean that you don't go and speak to the waiter and ask what's going on. But that's why I find India so beautiful. It's like they never say, no, we can't make you the food. They'll send someone on a scooter to get you the ingredients to make your food <laughs> that might take an hour and a half. They won't say, no, sorry, we don't have the ingredients, could you pick something else? It's beautiful. They never say no. <laughs> You know, and if you ask for directions in India, they will they they won't refuse if they don't know where 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 you want to go. They'll give you directions. It's it's, it's beautiful. It's so so beautiful. You know, and this is what you start to recognise in your own experience: that the beauty inherent in everyone, the love, the concern. And the problem is, is if we only have our data to go by, then that benefit can be very, very harmful, even you might, you might label it as evil. You know, the, the, the innate desire to relieve suffering of, the, of people is, can take many forms unless you've been introduced to this inherent perfection. So it's really, really breathtaking. Um, I'd really recommend visiting the website, just downloading a few introductory talks and just l listen to half an hour a day and see what happens. Now, what have you got to lose? You've got nothing to lose. I mean, if I was a billionaire, I'd pay people to listen to half an hour of talks a day. Get a thousand dollars whenever you do it. And everyone would be going, oh my God, half an hour, thousand dollars, half an hour, thousand dollars. But what, what, what we're off offering here, you know, if there was a big bag full of rupees here, 20 million rupees, where is, where is the benefit in that bag full of paper? No, it's just a bag full of paper. What we want is something that provides immediate benefit right now with whatever's going on and this is what we offer in this training. So test it out, 